Hello everyone, this is Sebastian, and welcome to another episode of the MATLAB and Simulink Robotics Arena. Today, my guest is John Zioski. Hey there. How's it going? Um, and he's going to talk to us about deep learning with NVIDIA Jetson and ROS. So, moving right along, I think what we're going to see today, because it's a video on deep learning, is uh, we're going to do it with an image, in particular an image classification task. So we said, all right, so we, we have this image, we put it through some MATLAB script or MATLAB function that is doing classification on this image. We ideally want to see that this image contains belt levers. That's going to be our, the result of our neural network. But also, the other focus of this video is going to be on GPU uh, code generation and integrating with NVIDIA GPUs, in particular the Jetson hardware. So what we want to do is, once we've designed this neural network in MATLAB, we want to take that and deploy it standalone to run on this Jetson. And we're going to see in just a second how we're going to do that. The whole point is we want to check that the results of that classification on the hardware is going to, are going to be the same. We're going to add something else to this problem to make it more fun. Is that instead of this just running as an executable, we want to integrate this with ROS or the robot operating system. And that's a framework that is commonly used for applications like robotics, automated driving, and so on. Pretty ubiquitous out in the, out the field. So given this problem, we, you know, I, I went to John and I asked him, can we do this? And because we're doing a video, I think the answer is yes. And yeah, the, the short answer is yes, it is possible to do this. Really what enables this, um, uh, deploying this code uh, to the Jetson is a new support package that actually just came out in 18B. Um, it's a GPU coder support package for NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, what this support package does is it really eases the transition from the development computer to the uh, to the hardware, right? So um, there's a couple different workflows. Um, it's got some functionality for integrating webcams and other peripheral devices attached to the board so that you can, uh, you know, in your MATLAB algorithm, you can make calls to those webcams and, and treat it all as one integrated workflow. And in that case, you write your MATLAB code uh, you generate an EXE from it, you deploy it standalone on the NVIDIA hardware, and then it just runs on there, utilizes the GPU, and, and lets you really easily offload that MATLAB code to the hardware. Um, in our case, uh, we're not going to be making use of the EXE in the webcam, so in our case, we're going to be generating a library from it, and then integrating that into our own little ROS node, and then letting that node communicate with the rest of the network. So how we do that, um, this is sort of the overview of the method that we uh, we chose to use. So, as Sebastian mentioned, we have a neural network that was built in MATLAB. Uh, it's a simple function that just uh, uses some of the deep learning tools to do some classification. Uh, the idea is that from this, we're going to use the GPU coder along with the support package to uh, build and deploy a static library to the actual NVIDIA hardware, the actual Jetson hardware. And then that library, that's going to make use of the CUDA libraries already present on the Jetson. And uh, that's what's going to give you the GPU speed up to the image classification, the image processing that you might be doing with your network. Right. So the difference here is then that you don't get an executable that runs. We basically just get the portable library that we have to call in, in whatever we write. Exactly. And so that code that we integrated into in our case here is going to be a C++ ROS node. And then the idea is that we have a camera on the Jetson that's running some third-party drivers. It's getting image messages sent to it. You know, it's publishing out image messages from the camera. We're going to read those images into our node. We're going to send them through our, our classification. And then we're going to publish that data to other ROS topics. Right. And what's really nice about that is that we can then read those results back into MATLAB for post-processing. We can analyze the results. We can take a look at how the network is performing on the GPU um, and continue developing from there. Yeah, and then just because we're reading it back in MATLAB, I mean, doesn't mean that you have to stop there, right? So we're doing that mostly just to check that things worked. But if you have an entire network of ROS nodes, then basically that node that we created can be used in, in combination with other algorithms that you might have, whether or not they be in MATLAB Simulink or, or other tools. Exactly. So I think right to software. Let's, let's see what... Yeah, let's uh, dive into it and uh, see what's going on. All right, guys. So here we are with uh, your familiar MATLAB background here. So let's get into the uh, the code files here that make this all work. So uh, in particular, we'll start with this guy here. Right. What this is supposed to be is just kind of a an example workflow of um, how you would go through and, and use a network. In our case, we chose to use AlexNet as our uh, network of choice. Right. So 
This script will just walk through it piece by piece. This first section, all we do is we load AlexNet and we bring up the analyzer. So if you want to take a look at what network it is and what sorts of layers it has, you can go through all this. Um, after we load AlexNet, here we're going to pop up an image that we're going to send to it to test the classification. Right. So in our case, we just chose image of peppers. Um, and then this last step, all we're going to do is just pass that image to the network and get the classification. And you can see that AlexNet here correctly identifies that those are bell peppers in the image. Great. So then we can generate code from this script, right? Well, no, not exactly. Okay. So this script is, uh, to generate code, what we need is we need a functional form of this script, right? So we need some kind of input, some kind of output, um, so that we can make the code into a uh, function that we can call later. Um, so to do that, uh, really what we chose, our, our main input is obviously the image, right? And our output, we chose the classification index, right? So essentially, AlexNet is reading from a, a big long list of of uh, data, and we're going to have it spit out what what line on that that data or uh, what that what category it, it uh, identifies it as. So here, pulled up this uh, this is the functional form of AlexNet. Uh, basically, it's doing the same thing that our script does, just in a function, right? Yep. So we have the image up here. Um, here's where we declare the network. There's one important step here that we had to take, um, and that is we need to save the network into a map file, right? So uh, the, the regular AlexNet over here doesn't work for code generation. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to save this network object to a map file, right? Uh, so we have this quick function over here that does that. You can see we load the network. Uh, and then all we do is just save that object to a mat file we call AlexNet. And then we also save the class names that we mentioned earlier that we're going to be using for the indexing, right? So you can run this script real quick. Um, and we'll see the mat files pop up over here, right? Um, in the meantime, take a look at this. So, uh, what this function here is doing back here with the network, all we're doing is calling this coder load deep learning network. And we just specify the mat file that we saved it in. And so what that does is it allows a, a code generatable representation of the network to be uh, created. Um, and then the rest of the function is very straightforward. We're calling predict using the network and the image that we have as the input. And then all we do is take a look at this output and determine which class index has the highest um, highest confidence. Right, so that, that output is a vector of probabilities for all of the classes. So you just get the max of that, and that's going to be the, the class index that you get out of Exactly. That's AlexNet's best guess. All right. So to make sure that this is still working here, uh, we wrote another script here that just calls our function, right? So we can see that here we're just loading the same image as before in the script. Now we have the index is coming out of our, uh, our code generation function. Yep. Um, and then all we're doing is loading the other mat file and displaying um, what AlexNet was able to predict. So yep. we can run this guy here, and we can see that we have the same image, bell pepper, and then this is the particular class index. So this is the actual output from our function. Um, and with that, we're ready to actually generate code. Perfect. So we already have a, a code generation project set up here, but essentially all we're doing is we define our code generation function here as our entry point function. Um, then we run our test script here. All that so does. We just ran, right? Yeah, so, that's yeah. exactly the same script we just ran. And what that does for us here is it, it automatically detects that uh, our function is going to need this format of input, right? right? Unsigned integer 227, 227 by 3. Yeah. Um, that's just the image. Um, we can skip over checking for the runtime issues. All that does is create a MEX file for some verification purposes. Um, but this is where we set up um, how we want to generate the code in yeah. particular. Really, the key points to note here are that we're generating a static library. We're not generating an EXE or just the source code. We want that library. Um, and then we set up the NVIDIA Jetson board. We were saying that we're going to put this on the Jetson, right? Um, in particular, the other step that's important uh, when configuring to deploy to the Jetson is you want to set up these board parameters here. Um, what this does is it, it allows MATLAB to recognize the Jetson board and automatically deploy the files to it. Right? it. And we specify that we want the files to be built in this directory on the board. Right? Uh, the other important bit is we are choosing to use uh, CUDIN libraries or CUDNN libraries. Yeah, so th these come from uh, GPU coder or MATLAB coder. There are certain support packages that let you target 
specialized frameworks for for d deep learning. So this is one of them that targets NVIDIA GPUs that we decided to use. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so once we have that all set up, we're ready to generate code. All we got to do is just hit the button. And we can see that it starts building the generated code. OK. And so here we are. Uh, after the build process, we've got the generated code here. Uh, we can see all the code files that got generated in particular. Um, but really, what we're concerned about is over here, we have uh, our, our generated library, right? So this actually also got ported over to the Jetson. So we can uh, hop over there and take a look at what's going on in the uh, the embedded side of things. Let's do it. OK, so here we have the NVIDIA Jetson TX1 pointing at a coffee cup. You can see what we're classifying. And that is John. Hello again. <laughs> and this is our Linux environment. So why don't you run us through? All right, so uh, let's see. So now that we've generated the code, right, we can see that we're in the directory that we specified for the build, uh, the AlexNet CodeGen. Here we have our CodeGen folder, same as in MATLAB, and here we have our generated library, right? So let's hop on down here. This is over in our uh, CatKim workspace for Ross. Uh, here's the, the package that we made ourselves here. So if we open this up, we can take a look here. We've got our launch file, source file, um, CMake list, so on and so forth. Uh, we're going to stop into here real quick, take a quick peek into the CMake list. Um, basically, the important part is we're making our ROS node here, right, our executable. Um, and then we're linking these libraries against it. Here's our code gen function, right? Uh, we declare this macro further up in the CMake list. But here's our .a file. And then we also have some dependencies on the CUDA libraries. Uh, here's the CUDA libraries and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, so then let's take a look a real quick peek at some of the actual ROS code. So here's our uh, source file and header file for the node. Um, most of the meat of the callback is actually in this header file here. Um, so pretty much what we have is a lot of image preprocessing because we have some different encoding from the message we're receiving from the camera, which is most of all this stuff. And then you can see here that we actually have the output and we're calling our generated code function, right? My AlexNet GPU. Right. And then we're publishing that back out. Yep, and then we're publishing that back out. Uh, we actually publish two things. We publish out the image that the uh, AlexNet is reading and then the uh, the index down here. Right. So let's actually get this thing up and running and uh, take a look here at some of the output. So our ROS node is starting, and we should hopefully get a, a coffee cup. And we're getting classification index 505. You know it's nice? We can take that back to MATLAB and figure out what we're looking at. We're back here in MATLAB now. Uh, we got ourselves a, a simple script here that all it does is connects ROS to the uh, Jetson. Uh, we got a couple subscribers taking a look at the nodes that, or the topics that we're publishing to. Um, and all it does is just um, run it through that, uh, that text file and uh, does some display of the image and, and the class that we're classifying. So let's uh, run this up here and see what we're looking at. All so right. See. AlexNet successfully classifies it as a coffee mug running on the Jetson. And, uh, yeah. And there is a wallet clock, apparently. Uh, that, that's news. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so thanks, John, for running us through that. That was uh, super interesting. Yeah, no problem. So let's wrap it up with some key takeaways from what you just saw. It's really easy to just import, train, design your neural network in MATLAB. We have a lot of tools for that. Um, and in the example we gave, we used this sort of an out-of-the-box neural network. But, you know, uh, there's tons of functionality for designing your own. You can even transfer learn on the network we use to, to tweak it to your own purposes. And then with the GPU coder and GPU coder support package, it's real simple to generate standalone CUDA code. Um, whether that's the EXE workflow, where you take advantage of the webcam peripherals and some of the, uh, the functionality we have there, or you're generating just a library and you want to use that function in some of your own C code. We've got some great tools to, to help you do that. And then we gave a little example in particular of how you can take that generated code and integrate it into a ROS, uh, ROS network. And then once you're in ROS, you know, you're, you're free to talk to anything else that uses ROS. Um, that could be MATLAB Simulink, like it was in our case, or, you know, if you've got other external networks you want to interface with, it's, it's up to you now to, to go ahead and, and uh, talk to them. Yep. Awesome. So thanks again. Yeah, no problem. Uh, we'll just end with the usual resources here. So if you want to reach out with questions about this video or other things, we have our email and Facebook group. 
and as well as our other resources there. So thank you for watching.